Hey guys, what's up? Andy Fogarty from theathomewelder.com and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're welding outside today. We are going to build a 20 foot driveway gate, a rolling gate, and we're going to use this prefab material. Yes, I know, prefab. There's a reason why we're using it and I'll tell you in a little bit. We're going to build it on this big old trailer hooked to that trailer. Typically with these fence panels, you usually bolt them together, but we're building a big 20 foot driveway gate with them. So we need this thing to be pretty sturdy. So we're gonna weld it together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find out where all our welding joints are gonna be, and we're gonna grind off that coating. Okay, so we went ahead and ground off all of the coating from all the places where we're going to do some welding and uh, cut all the posts to the length they needed to be and also went ahead and welded the caps onto the posts. I just like to get that out of the way. And now all we have to do is we're going to start welding this thing together. Man, it's starting to get dark out here. I hope it didn't rain on me. All right, now we've got the fence panels all welded up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build this uh, nice sturdy outer frame. Now this frame is gonna give it uh, a lot more stability. It's gonna keep it nice and sturdy because this, this prefabricated fence panels, well, you know, they're made to be maneuverable. They're not made to be very rigid and very sturdy. So we're gonna stiffen them up with some inch and five eighths round tube. And the reason we're using inch and five eighths is because this, is one of our cantilevers. Now this inch and five eighths is gonna fit in here perfectly and allow the gate to roll. So we've got a, a few of these that we're gonna be setting up on posts and that's what's gonna allow the gate to roll back and forth. Now the construction of this frame is very simple. We're basically just building a 24 foot by four foot big rectangle that we're gonna sit right on top of this of these fence panels. <laughs> All right, so because of how big this thing is and because I don't really have a whole lot of room inside the shop to maneuver a 24 foot long rectangle, uh, I'm just gonna build this thing out here on top of the fence panel. Now, the dangers of doing it this way is it's, it's easy for this to get a little unsquare, so I need to make sure that I'm double checking as I'm going throughout this whole process to make sure that I'm building uh, everything square. This is one of those times where I wish I just had a really big warehouse. All right, so right now I'm just, I'm tacking this in place. I wanna make sure that I have everything together, but I also wanna make sure that I'm keeping everything nice and square from this side, 24 feet down that way. So I'm gonna tack this together, make sure everything is good, and I'll come back and finish it up. All right, so we've got the big rectangular frame all built and welded up. It's nice and secure. Now the next thing we need to do is actually weld it to the gate panels themselves. Now we can't just take this frame and set it right on top and weld it directly to the paneling. We're gonna have to use some spacers. And the reason we're using those spacers is because we have to lift that up off so we can use these cantilevers. The cantilever is going to sit right on top of that tubing and it has to have a little bit of clearance. So we're using some one inch tube to space this out. So we're gonna find out where I'm gonna put my spacers, weld my spacers to the paneling, and then I'm gonna weld the frame to the spacers. And that should pretty much cover this build. Okay, so we have this build pretty much done. We've got the panels all welded together, we've got the frame welded together, we've got the frame welded to the panels with the spacers, and I know I have plenty of space for my cantilevers. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just take an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel and zip off the bottom of these pickets. And the only reason those are there, again, is because we use this prefab fencing panel, but I don't want that on the gate. And we are gonna add a set of wheels on the very front of the gate, so that way when you can, you can roll it across the big huge driveway but we're gonna do that on site after we've already put in the posts and everything that way we can just bolt it on and we know exactly where it needs to be because the curb is a little funny out there
All right, that's it. We are done with the actual building process. Now, I've, you see, I've already started priming the areas that needed to be painted, and I'm just gonna cover those with some black, make it all nice and pretty, and we'll be done, ready to install. Now, the posts I'm using here are just regular run-of-the-mill posts you can get anywhere. These are literally chain-link fence posts that I'm using. Got those because they were the perfect size, and these cantilevers are actually made to fit on that on those uh, type posts. So that's what I went and picked up. Super cheap, and get them anywhere. So that's it. All we gotta do to install this thing is literally just concrete two posts into the ground, bolt these U-bolts on there, and then line the track up with the rail that we have on our gate, and that's it. It shouldn't take more than an hour tops to put this gate in. Now if you wanna know more about the different types of fence panels that you can get, uh, go to kingmetals.com. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoy this. I know it's something a little bit different, show you how to use some of these prefab fence panels a little bit differently than what they would normally use them for, but it saves you a lot of time and it also saves you and your clients uh, a good deal of money using the prefab fence panels. The only thing you gotta be careful of is just making sure they're nice and sturdy.